we're going to be looking at Lenz's law, which is used to determine the direction of an induced EMF. As a recap, Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction states that the induced EMF is directly proportional to the rate of change of flux linkage through a coil of wire. And Faraday's law is expressed mathematically by this equation. And the minus sign indicates the direction of the induced EMF, which is explained using Lenz's law. Lenz's law states that the direction of the induced EMF opposes the change in magnetic flux linkage that is producing it. So we need a change in flux linkage in order to induce an EMF. That's Faraday's law. But Lenz's law states that this induced EMF has to oppose what is creating it. So it does seem strange that you're trying to oppose what is producing you, but it's all about conservation of energy. So for electromagnetic induction, we need relative motion between a conductor and a magnet. So in terms of transformation of energy, we're getting kinetic energy transforming into electrical energy. That means we need to lose kinetic energy in order to produce electrical energy. So, for example, if we, need, if we produce 20 joules of electrical energy, then we've needed to have transformed 20 joules of kinetic energy. If the motion was not opposed, or that means kinetic energy remained the same, then the electrical energy would be created from nothing. And this is not possible because it's violating the law of conservation of energy. So in order to conserve energy, the induced currents must flow in a direction that they produce force that opposes the motion and so reduces the kinetic energy in order to create the electrical energy. So yes, we need motion in order to get a change in magnetic flux linkage, which will induce an EMF. But we need to reduce the motion, reduce the kinetic energy in order to conserve energy. And so the induced EMF has to flow in a direction to oppose that motion, to oppose the change in magnetic flux linkage. And this is why you need to constantly put in energy into the system in order to maintain the kinetic energy, the motion, and as well as to produce the electrical energy to induce the EMF. I'm now going to prove Lenz's law. You do not need to know the proof, so it's for those who are interested. So we're considering a wire, AB, that is moving down so cutting through the magnetic field lines of the north and south poles. And inside the wire, we have positive charges. So these positive charges are moving downwards with the wire. So you've got moving charges that are moving perpendicular to a magnetic field. And so they will experience a magnetic force. And we can use Fleming's left hand rule to determine the direction of the force. So we take the first finger of our left hand, which represents the direction of the magnetic flux density. So the magnetic flux density is from the north pole to the south pole. So we take our first finger and point it to the right. We take the second finger of our left hand, which represents the direction in which positive charges are moving. They're moving downwards. So we will point our second finger vertically downwards. So you'll see your thumb, which represents the direction of the magnetic force on those charges, is pointing out of the plane of the screen. Or in this case, is pointing towards point B. So as the positive charges are experiencing a force along the wire towards point B, we're getting a movement of positive charges. So we're getting a flow of current, the induced current 
and that is in the direction towards B. So now we have a current carrying conductor which is moving perpendicular to a magnetic field. So again, it will experience a magnetic force and we can use Fleming's left hand rule to determine the direction of that force on the current carrying conductor. So again, we point the first finger of our left hand to the right, indicating the direction of the magnetic flux density. We now point our second finger in the direction of the current, which is towards B or towards or out of the plane of the screen. And so you'll see your thumb, which represents the direction of the magnetic force, is acting vertically upwards. So you have a wire moving downwards in a magnetic field where an induced current is flowing along the wire, but that is producing a force which is vertically upwards. And so this force is going to decelerate the wire because the force is in the opposite direction to the motion. And so hence, we've got an induced current flowing in a direction that it is producing a force that is opposing the motion that is creating it. So we're getting Lenz's law. We now consider a magnet whose north pole is approaching a coil of wire. There'll be a change in magnetic flux linkage through the coils that will induce an EMF. An induced current through the coils will make the coils become an electromagnet. And so the current through the coils will flow in a direction in order to produce a force that opposes the motion of the magnet. So that means it will move in a direction in order to set up a north pole on side A in order to repel the magnet. And this will reduce the kinetic energy of the magnet in order to produce the electrical energy, the induced EMF. For the case when the magnet is moving away from the coils of wire, the induced current in the coils will produce a force in order to oppose the motion. So that is, it will flow in a direction to create a south pole at end A that will attract the leaving magnet.